Stability. Stability is the capability of a body to return to its original condition after a disturbance. There are two types of stability. Static stability, the original reaction, and dynamic stability, which describes the subsequent reaction. Dynamic positive stability is when a body returns to its original position through oscillations of decreasing amplitude. Dynamic neutral stability is when oscillations continue without a change in amplitude. And dynamic negative stability is when oscillations increase in amplitude. Types of static stability. Positive static stability is when a body returns to its previous condition after a disturbance. Neutral static stability is when a body maintains its new position after a disturbance. And negative static stability is when a body continues to move away from its previous condition after a disturbance. A statically stable aircraft will always be dynamically stable. Aperiodic damping. Consider a system that has positive static stability. If after having been displaced from equilibrium, the system under the action of the forces created simply subsides gently back to its original condition and remains there, the system is said to be dynamically stable with aperiodic damping. Periodic damping. If the system reaches the equilibrium point with a certain velocity so that it overshoots, the new forces will now, since it is statically stable, retard the system, so that the body makes a sequence of oscillations around its previous position in a periodic motion. This period is defined as the interval of time taken by the body to make a complete oscillation. Types of dynamic stability. Positive when a body returns to its original position with oscillations of decreasing amplitude. Neutral when oscillations continue without a change in amplitude. Negative when oscillations increase in amplitude. A statically unstable aircraft can never be dynamically stable. Oscillations in pitch. Aircraft have two kinds of pitch oscillations. Short period oscillation and a long period one called fugoid or long mode oscillation. The short period oscillation must have positive dynamic stability, where a change in attitude changes the angle of attack and vice versa. If an aircraft is forced off its path abruptly, it will return to its original longitude position through a series of rapid converging oscillations. The short period is normally heavily damped. For small aircraft, the disturbance is normally damped after one oscillation to one tenth of the initial amplitude and completely damped after approximately two oscillations. Large aircraft, especially at high altitudes, are less damped, making it necessary to use the autopilot as an active dynamic damper. Short mode or rapid oscillations may last only a second or less. If the short mode is unstable, the oscillations could increase to dangerous levels before the pilot realises what is happening. Damping of the long period fugoid is normally very weak, Static longitudinal stability. The effect of downwash from the wing on static longitudinal stability of an aircraft is negative. As the angle of attack increases, nose up, so does the downwash behind the wing. If this increased downwash hits the tailplane, it will tend to push the tail down when you actually want it to go up, so restoring forces for positive longitudinal stability are reduced. Directional stability. Directional stability is the natural ability of an aircraft to recover from a disturbance in yaw. If an aircraft is disturbed by a crosswind gust, the momentum of the aircraft carries it along the original flight path, so the relative airflow ends up being equal and opposite to the velocity of the aircraft. The aircraft is now side slipping. In a slide slip to the right, the nose of the aircraft slips to the right. The fin produces a stabilising force which in turn produces a restoring moment and the side slip angle is reduced to zero. Keel surfaces ahead of the centre of gravity have an unstable influence, but keel surfaces behind the centre of gravity have a stable influence. 
The restoring moment is determined by the design of the vertical fin and the moment arm. The vertical fin is a symmetrical aerofoil. In a side slip, the aerodynamic force depends on its lift coefficient and area. The larger the area, the larger the restoring moment. At high side slip angles, i.e. high angle of attack for the vertical fin, it is possible for the fin to stall. Sweep back will increase the stalling angle and also increase the moment arm because the centre of pressure of the fin will be further aft. Dorsal and ventral fins increase directional stability at high side slip angles. Decreasing aspect ratio increases stalling angle of the fin. As the centre of gravity moves forward, directional stability increases due to a longer moment arm. Vortex strakes on the nose, for example on the DC-9 and MD-80, reduce yawing disturbances at high angles of attack. The larger the fin, the greater the directional stability of an aircraft. However, there has to be a compromise because if the fin's too big, this will create more zero lift drag or profile drag. One way of getting around this is to have multiple smaller fins, like in the F-14 Tomcat. Swept wings increase directional stability as the wing with more of its span exposed to the airflow generates more drag. Lateral stability. The natural ability of an aircraft to recover from a disturbance in the lateral plane. When an aircraft banks, the lift vector is inclined. There is a sideways force on the aircraft and a side slip results. Lift on the lower wing becomes greater from the side slip and produces a rolling moment tending to restore the aircraft to wings level, i.e. side slip is the main stabilising factor. A sideways drag component may also cause a restoring rolling moment. Dihedral of the wing is the angle between the 0.25 chord line of the wing and the lateral axis. Dihedral is used to ensure positive static lateral stability. The lower wing meets the airflow at a higher angle of attack and produces more lift. The resultant rolling moment tends to return the aircraft to wings level. The greater the side slip, the greater the stabilising moment. Swept wings contribute to lateral stability. In a side slip, the lower wing exposes a greater span to the relative airflow and generates more lift. Surfaces above the centre of gravity will increase lateral stability. The drag line will be above the centre of gravity and there will be a restoring moment which tends to raise the lower wing. Note a drag line below the centre of gravity will have a destabilising effect. A high wing increases lateral stability. It's similar in effect to surfaces above the centre of gravity. Aircraft with high swept wings, for example the BAE 146, may have too much lateral stability and, uh, and anhedral may be used to destabilise the aircraft laterally. Propeller slipstream may have a destabilising effect during a side slip. The slipstream will no longer be symmetrical about the longitudinal axis. The dynamic pressure on the slipstream is higher than in the free stream and covers more of the training wing in a side slip. The resulting moment will tend to increase the displacement when flaps, partial span types, are lowered, the centre of pressure of the wing is moved inwards. This decreases the moment arm and the restoring moment is reduced. Lateral stability is therefore reduced. Dynamic lateral stability. When an aircraft rolls about the longitudinal axis, the angle of attack of the downgoing wing is increased. Lift is also increased and a rolling moment is created which opposes the initial disturbance and therefore dampens the roll. Damping of the roll is proportional to the rate of roll and therefore cannot bring the wings back to a level position. Lateral and directional stability. A yaw disturbance generates a rolling moment. A roll disturbance generates a yawing moment. Spiral instability occurs when directional stability is too great compared to lateral stability. Contrast this with Dutch roll. A disturbance causes the right wing to drop, i.e. a roll to the right. The roll causes a side slip. Fin and keel surfaces yaw the aircraft into the airflow, i.e. to the right, and the outer left wing travels slightly faster than the inner wing. 
This adds to the rolling moment to the right, which opposes and is greater than the lateral stability forces. The angle of bank increases further, giving to a downward spiral. Dutch roll. This is a combined rolling and yawing motion, which occurs when lateral stability is too great compared to directional stability. Contrast this with spiral instability. It's more likely to happen on swept wing aircraft. A disturbance causes an aircraft to yaw to the right. The left wing travels faster than the right wing and generates more lift and causes a roll to the right. Lateral stability forces correct departure from wings level, but the aircraft does not much have a tendency to turn in the direction of the side slip due to weak directional stability. Yaw dampers are used to alleviate Dutch roll. The direction and rate of yaw is used to calculate inputs for the rudder system. Spiral descent versus Dutch roll. In a spiral descent, directional stability is too great. In a Dutch roll, lateral stability is too great. The effect of altitude. Due to a decrease in density with altitude, the aerodynamic forces created by the stabilizing surfaces reduces. Stability therefore decreases with altitude. With increasing altitude, directional stability reduces at a greater rate than lateral stability. Therefore, the tendency to Dutch roll increases and the tendency for spiral instability decreases. Spinning. For a spin to occur, the aircraft must be in a stalled condition. It can develop in any attitude and at any airspeed. Warnings of the approach to a spin. Aerodynamic buffet, tail surfaces in the turbulent wake of the wing. Lateral instability may be encountered in swept wing aircraft. The wing tips stall first and a slight wallowing may be experienced. Pitch up. Auto rotation. If a wing drops during a stall, the downgoing wing has a higher angle of attack than the upgoing wing. A combination of rolling and yawing motion which occurs when an aircraft enters a spin, also called an incipient spin. Once the auto rotation becomes self-sustaining, the aircraft is spinning. An aft CG promotes spinning. Mass distribution, for example asymmetric fuel load, may have an adverse effect on spin characteristics. The turn indicator always shows the correct yaw indication, whether you're in an upright or inverted spin. The spin recovery technique. You should always refer to the flight manual. However, a general method might be reduce power, ailerons neutral, full opposite rudder to stop rotation, elevator forward to break the stall, and gently ease out of the dive.